The scripture reading today comes from Ephesians 2, 11 through 22. So then, remember the one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you, once were far, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Pretty awesome. God's word for God's people. And our hearts hear and our lives respond. Thank you, Pam. And uh, I wanted to, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Some of you know me and some of you don't. Some of you know me very well because I came and I taught a class on mental health first aid here a few weeks, well, a couple of months ago now, and uh, which was really exciting. We had a lot of people really interested in the topic. And I work in mental health. This is what I do. I've done it for about 20 years. I'm also a seminary student at Asbury Theological Seminary. So uh, Pastor Diane asked me if I would cover today. I said, sure, sure. That's probably about six weeks ago. She said, May 19th. I said, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to come preach for you. And then I started saying, well, what am I gonna what am I gonna talk about? You know, I talk about mental health all day long, so I'm really gonna dig deep into my seminary education and I'm gonna, you know, talk about something else in our life in Christ and some other way that, that our life in Christ is related. And then I started looking at the United Church of Christ's website, and they recommend that the third Sunday of every May is Mental Health Month. <laughs> mental Health Day. That's a sighting of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's a sighting of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, thank you. So, so I said, okay, Lord. That's what I'll do. I'll talk about mental health today. And I know it's on a couple of slides, but I was wondering if you could sw switch back to the um, to the scripture reading a little bit, and maybe go to the beginning. It's the wrong deck. There, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. All right, that's good. And. Well, I started pouring through scriptures and saying, you know, what am, I, what am I going to talk about? Well, I took a class this semester on Ephesians. And this passage, you know, at first doesn't seem to have a lot to do with mental health. But then I started realizing, yes, it does. And what we did, this was an exegesis class. And in, in, in an exegesis, you spend a lot of time trying to take really long passages and summarize them into really concise, clear messages. So if I had to come up with one, sub, one sentence for what this entire passage is saying, it would probably be something like this. Our God is a God who breaks down walls, unites, and then reconciles us to Him. And, you know, it skips around a little bit in here in the passage, but it does talk about breaking down the dividing wall. I think that's on the next slide. Oh, no, it was on 14, I'm sorry. No. I'm a pain like this, I'm sorry. 14. <laughs> For he is our peace, in his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. So in this case it wasn't a wall, a physical wall, and we can get into the politics of talking about as Christians whether we should be building walls or tearing them down. 
but that's we'll talk about that later. The uh, so that wall was hostility. This wasn't a physical wall. And but we have to talk a little bit about breaking down walls. And this is a church that knows something about breaking down walls. A few weeks ago, we celebrated eight years of being an open and affirming church. That was a wall that's hard to break down. In our society, it's proven very difficult to break down. But this church, I, I would say we, because we're, Mariah and Alana and I are spending a lot of time here at, here at the church, but we weren't here then. You guys are very brave to break through that wall. But breaking through walls is what God does. And he does it through Jesus Christ. And when I started thinking about mental health and how this relates, I started thinking about the walls that, meant, that we often associate with people who have mental illnesses, especially really severe mental illnesses. Historically, way back, people who had severe mental illnesses lived in institutions, right? They lived in, we, we had all kinds of words for them, asylums and things like that. But they lived in, they lived in institutions of some kind. Well, somewhere around the 1950s, people started really deciding that wasn't a good thing and that they should live out in the community with the rest of us. It would be better for them, be more healthy, especially as medications started to develop that would make it a little easier for them to live out in the, out in the world. So what happened was something called deinstitutionalization. And it was a policy, basically, to start taking people out of the state institutions and start allowing them to live in the community. So a wall was broken down there. We did break down a wall. We started letting them out of those walls, but they were living inside walls. And unfortunately, what didn't happen was we were supposed to be providing them community services out there. We were supposed to be providing them a lot of access to all the help that they need out in the community, but we didn't do a very good job of it. So a lot of people, a lot of things happened with the people who came out of these asylums. So sometimes they found new walls. One of the places they found new walls was in jails. And today, up to 64% of people in local jails show signs and symptoms of very serious mental illness. So that's illness that is a disease. We don't lock people up because they have cancer, do we? Or we don't lock people up because they have the flu. We don't lock them up because they have heart disease or diabetes. But if someone has a mental illness, we do sometimes lock them up because their behaviors do things that, we, that make us feel very uncomfortable. We find ways to lock them away. So that's another wall. They went from one wall to another wall. And you can see this in statistics, because jail populations were down here, and as people, as the, as the institutionalization happened, jail populations raised. As the asylum or state institution populations decreased, they just transferred from one wall to another. So there are other walls that really get created when it comes to mental illness. And some of them are financial. I had a client recently who, there was one medicine that really works for her, but the medicine cost $750, I think it was, a month. And insurance would not cover it because it's a newer medicine. And the, uh, the, the, the pharmaceutical company themselves would not give her a break on the medicine. She applied for a break on the medicine. They said, no, you make plenty of money. Well, she made about $1,000 a month. So where they wanted her to live, she had to make a choice between either her medicine or her home. That's not a wall that we should be placing up for anybody. I think we can all agree with that. So we have to ask ourselves as Christians, what are we supposed to do? And because God is a God who breaks down walls, right? God breaks down walls with us, through us. Uh, how did Christ break down walls, break down this wall? Did he come down like, like the Incredible Hulk, the Avenger just came out? So did he come out like the Incredible Hulk and smash the wall, Hulk smash? No. Did he come down with Thor's hammer, smash down the wall with a bolt of lightning? No. Did he use a bulldozer? No. Instead, he bled on it. He bled on the wall. He entered into our world, the world that had suffering in it, the world that needed someone to save them from the suffering. And he suffered with us. And he lived with us. Much of Christ's ministry is just a ministry of presence. 
He hung out with people that people, other people didn't want to hang out with, right? He hung out with the tax collectors, which are just like kind of, kind of like the mafia without the like fashion sense. And, and he hung out with uh, possibly prostitutes, even though Mary Magdalene, we don't really know that she's a prostitute, never said that in the Bible, but that's what we think of her as. That's a tr tradition. He hung out with, um, with sinners, right? He was, he was criticized for dining with the sinners. And he hung out with a bunch of stinky fishermen. <laughs> hung out with a bunch of stinky fishermen. So he was hanging out with a lot of people that the rest of society didn't want to hang out with. So who are we? We're the body of Christ. That's what we're called. We are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. After he came down, humbled himself to be with us, to live in the suffering world with us. He died, he was resurrected, he ascended, and left us with the Holy Spirit to continue his ministry. Amen. So it's our responsibility to break down walls. This is our job. But we're not going to do it with a bulldozer. We're going to do it by a ministry of presence, by being with people. So how are we going to break down walls with mental health? We're going to make sure that we are 100% welcoming for anybody who has mental health problems, no matter what their behaviors might be, no matter um, what little problems they may have. You know, I was, I, I've heard a story recently of someone who uh, was, in a, was in a meditative, it was a meditative service, it was supposed to be very quiet, and someone came in and sat in the back row, sat in the very back, but they were hearing voices and they were talking to themselves, and they were asked to leave. Now, the person had no ill intentions in asking them to leave. They were trying to just make the meditative service what they thought it was supposed to be. But for that person, that person needed Christ too. That's why they were there, right? So we have to be very careful and make sure that we're not creating walls. That's just an example. We also have to recognize that some people have problems with drugs and alcohol, which is also a mental health problem. And we have to be tolerant of behaviors to a point, but we also have to be willing to understand them for what they are. And just be with people. And those of you that took the mental health first aid class with, uh, with me, I, I'm not going to quiz you, don't worry. But the last step of our action plan was to encourage social supports. If you remember that, it was to encourage self-help and other support strategies. One of those very important is social, is social networks. And who better than the body of Christ to provide that kind of support for people, that kind of love and care, and let them know. And this church is trying to break another wall. We have a ministry that's trying to begin here of talking to and sending out the message, educating and providing that support for especially young people who are having suicidal thoughts. Because suicide is a epidemic right now in the United States. So this is a really important topic to talk about. Uh, that we're calling the ministry Surf's Edge in honor of a young lady who died by suicide in January at 15 years old. So our job is to continue that ministry of Jesus Christ, to be his hands and feet, and to be his presence for everyone in the world, including people with mental illnesses. So Lord, we come to you in prayer again. Almighty One, we pray, we pray for your power, your courage, your bravery, and that ability to humble ourselves, to meet everyone where they are in the world. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we know that we can cause healing. We can bring healing to all those who need it. And today, especially, we pray for those who have invisible illnesses, illnesses that you can't see, illnesses that are inside. And we pray for their recovery. We pray for everyone that's here today that's suffering, who might be suffering from mental health problems silently. And we pray for those who are seeking treatment and not seeking treatment. But mostly we're really here to pray for ourselves today that we can become the body of Christ, that we can truly be what Christ wants us to be. In Christ's name, amen. amen. amen.